that Allah's Rahma keeps everything flowing and that we took a path to be nothing. Alhamdulillah from awliyaullah's teachings and their guidance for us on how to guide is that there are 12 months and these are 12 hijabs and there are 12 realities. You like it, you don't like it, Allah doesn't care. But awliyaullah come to give from their understanding and teaching like a ship that traversing different oceans. As soon as they enter into the month of Safar means that you take the app, Muhammadan Way app, you download, you click months, you click the month of Safar, we put all of this at people's fingertips. So easy to follow, to understand. As soon as we look, shows you the second lunar month Safar, brings to you the 9 times 2 and the secret of 18. Means these are in the power of nine. Every month at this teaching is from the Sultanat. Well, as we describe, eight will hold the one king, eight will uphold the throne of one king. Means this is from the reality of the Sultanat of Allah's heavens. So, means that that nine on the second month has to do with the reality of 18. Then we look at the 18th name of Sayyidina Muhammad for Dalal Khirat is Rasulul Rahmah. Means that Prophet is the key for every name of Allah 18th name of Allah Al-Fatah. So it means that when Al-Fatah the opener wants to open the key of our Rahmah, the Rahmah of Allah has to enter. Means that Prophet's key has to enter so that the opening of Rahmah begin to flow. So means this month 18, the opening of Rahmah, the opening for Rahmah to even flow. Then they say that the 18th Surah of Holy Qur'an is Surah Al-Kahf and Ashab Al-Kahf. That's how we understand the guidance of Holy Qur'an. Not that you randomly read whatever you want and you get your own understanding, that's a different level. When Allah wants to grant Waliul Murshidun in the same surah that whom we granted a guidance and a wakil from the heavens means they're guiding based on heavenly coordinates, not dunya coordinates. So those whom follow then they'll understand their lives more. If they don't then they just feel that there's all sorts of confusion and difficulty around. So they say it's a heaven month and all sorts of difficulties, guidance comes to teach you, yes, this cave that Allah describes for Ashab al-Kahf, the hijab in which Allah was dressing and is continuously dressing the ruhaniyat of Nur Muhammad Means these 12 hijabs were an eternal dress in which Allah is making the zikr on Nur Muhammad This month Safar is Subhan Alimul Hakim, the one who glory be to Allah the all-knowing and the wise. Now you have 18, you have the Fatah and the opening of Rahmah, you have Ashab al-Kaf and Surat al-Kaf and also the story of Sayyidina Khidr and, and Nabi Musa all in the same story. And then telling you the hijab is what? Glory be to the one who's going to give you knowledge and wisdom. So means that in this month knowledge and wisdom is bestowed. And the hijab is Hayba. it's a majestic hijab and therefore it creates every type of difficulty. Any type of Divine Majesty when it begins to tanzila and begin to emanate towards creation by its nature it will correct everything wrong. Hence people's difficulties in life. We said many times if our life is like crooked we may think we're great. We may say, oh we have the purest heart and best of intentions, Allah may see you as something little bit crooked. 
It's not about you evaluating yourself and you giving your title or me giving my title. It's about Allah giving us the title. There's nobody on earth who can give us a title of any value. It's Allah that gives the title. So it means everything like this, this hayba comes to fix it. So this hijab of hayba is coming and they begin to guide that if you want you're all stamped with 18 and 8 and 1. Your, your right hand is 18. Your right hand has a 1 and an 8 and a fata al rahmah on your right hand that, Ya Rabbi that I'm stepping into this month of safar. Subhanahu man huwa alimul hakim, the one whom is glory be to him who bestows all knowledges and hikmah and wisdom that fata rahmah open this rahmah and this mercy for me. There's a secret now in your right hand why you're stamped with one and eight. Why is this the, the right hand and has barakah and power and blessings? Then they direct us to Holy Qur'an and what Allah describes in Holy Qur'an for Ashab al-Kahf that they were youths, young people whom they worked for a king and all from very wealthy big backgrounds. And the king decided to come against all deen and religion and oppose upon them a zulamat. That king today is shaitan and what he's trying to do with the earth. Every wicked king in Qur'an is a symbol of shaitan for our modern day, for us to understand how do you bring this to right now. Right now the shaitanic kingdom wants to overtake everyone. So what Allah told the youth, run to the cave, run to the cave. Run to this cave, perchance I will shower you with my rahmah. Oh, rahmah, al fatah rahmah. So then awliya come into our lives and say, This is the cave and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad. The cave in which Prophet took Sayyidina Abu Bakr to the cave and dressed from its realities, blessed from its realities. Everything is a symbol of a much greater reality that Allah wants us, run, run to the cave. In your life you're not going to survive with shaitan. There's no mountain that you can go higher than these awliya. Because maybe new son said the same thing, oh Baba don't worry, I don't have to get in your ship, I'll get a better ship, I'll run to a higher mountain and Allah drowned him, there's no higher mountain. When only Allah are dispatched, they're guiding to this mercy and this rahmah. That Allah want to bestow His rahmah, want us to be taught that go with them to the cave. Means attach yourself to them, they are moving into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and they begin to teach you, you better love Prophet more than you love yourself through how? Through your salawats. Through your mawlids, your nasheeds. The Ya Rabbi, Qulini kuntum tuhibunullah fa tabiuni yuhibukumullah. You want Allah's love? No way to get Allah's love. First follow the love and the example of Sayyidina Muhammad. Then Allah bestow His love. So they told everyone, run to the cave. Ya Rabbi, I'm asking to go to this cave of safety. I'm asking to be with those whom are in the cave. They are Ashab al not eight only, there's not seven and the one and they have the names of Ashab al-Kahf but those are placeholders for a much deeper reality. There are seven wazirs of Sayyidina Mahdi on this earth right now and Sayyidina Mahdi and the Qudra that he represents the guardian of the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad and the sleepers they have given their being to that reality. And they don't move and breathe from their own inspiration but what from Allah wants from them. So means they are from the highest level of realities and they exist upon this earth to bring people back to that cave and to spread the teachings of that reality, the Muhammadan heart. So then Allah is giving for us then run to the cave, run to this reality, be dressed from this reality. And then they say, well, oh, this is a heavy month because 
you're not going to be from Ashab al Kahf. It's not about everybody thinking that they're Ashab al Kahf, oh, I'm Ashab al Kahf, maybe I should try to be from Ashab al Kahf. But Allah wants humility. So, do you remember the story of Ashab al Kahf? They had a dog, Kitmir. And Allah and we repeat every year this reality because every year we forget the reality at the beginning of <laughs> Safat. Yeah. Allah gives the example that the Qidmiyyah was following Ashab al Kahf and following them because he's inspired to follow these sleepers and their life was to throw rocks at him. And they threw rocks and threw rocks and threw rocks, go away. You give us a way, maybe you're going to eat us when we go for our Lord and our seclusion or whatever service Allah wants for us and the two roles now become distinguished. Is that Ashab al Kaf and the people of the cave, trained by the cave, they must test those students because in actuality the student is a wild dog. If you give a condition, you don't know when he's going to bite, when he's going to attack, how he's going to attack you. And they can't keep that, they can't keep that condition. They'll eat the Ashab al Kahf. If you get a little bit of power, you'll eat that person and attack them. So, what Allah with the dog, keep throwing rocks, keep throwing rocks, keep throwing rocks, means our life was testing, our life was extreme testing. Continuously they threw rocks, continuously they threw insults, continuously they humiliated us in public, in private, at events. There was never a time of ease and we never let go and we never stopped in our destination. And then what Allah after they threw their rocks, threw their rocks, threw their rocks, Allah gave a tongue to the dog in which the dog stood up and said, no matter how much you throw, I'm not stopping. But perchance you'll find me to be of service to you while you serve your Lord. And he ended up being the guardian of the cave. And a najis creature that not widely respected in Islamic culture, a considered to be dirty, became a guardian for those very holy souls. And how he became a guardian was by imtihan and testing. And Allah wants to, to show, is this, is this person washi, wild or is this person tamed? How would anyone know what they really are until Allah throw rocks at you? And they come in every direction and they don't come friendly. They come with every type of word, every type of insult, every type of condition to see what? What condition are you in? What condition are you in? Because Allah wants to give a raise, Allah wants to give payday. So I want to grant that servant a station and he gives the station at such an easy because they say, oh Shaykh, these maqams you talk are high, he says, no what could be lower than the maqam of a dog? This is easy. Allah is not making it high that you, you have to be like Nabi Musa no. He says that, no, I'll make it for something that you consider to be dirty and I granted him haybah. It was enough for Qatmir to sit at the cave and Allah described anybody who walked was in fear. They didn't even have to see Ashab al Kaf to be scared. They saw him and that was enough. Imagine if he scared them, what Ashab al Kaf will do to you? And gives us all hope. Ya Rabbi, I'm, I want to come to your realities. Then Allah take your imtihan, take your testing, take all of this type of difficulty so that Allah it's not about him and her, I'm going to set them right. Let me give an answer and I'll give it back to them really good. You're servant of Allah Allah will see how much abuse are you capable of taking. Not from the internet people physically abusing each other and say, oh Shaykh is telling me to stay quiet. No, every time you don't have to answer with your mouth back. Somebody is insulting you with your mouth, stay quiet. You're not going to change anything, stay quiet, walk away, cut off. 
have nothing to do with it. So Allah is the best of those who guard me. وَفَأُدُ عَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِلِبَادٍ Ya Rabbi verily you see my condition. Al-Muntaqeem we read it in the Burda Sharif. They don't understand even the understanding of Burda Sharif. When they're saying Al-Muntaqeem that only one who can avenge me is Allah If Allah want to guard you then He has to begin to avenge you from shaitan. Ya Rabbi shaitan is bothering me too much, Ya Rabbi you are my guardian, you are my wakil, you are my, my wali, you are the one whom I'm going to send your, your angels to burn the shaitan who is bothering me. So means then you know, what are you going to change in this life? Stay quiet, stay quiet in your testing. You, you want or you don't want in your soul something, you don't know even your soul is asking for it but your body said, I don't ever want it, I never wanted this maqam. But Allah wanted it for you. So then they teach, if you're watching you're a rare type of person to be watching. This is not general teaching. Most of general masjid people they tune in and say, these people are crazy and they tune right out. It was not meant for them. This is a different level entirely of realities. So that they can say that this imtihan and testing in your life, if you don't pass it don't worry. They'll be patient, they sit with you for 30 years, 40 years and will go through the whole thing over and over and over. They don't care, it's whatever Allah want. But at some point you wake up and say, no, I'm being tested. It's not about him and her and me replying to people, it's about Allah wants something from me. I'm only worried about my grave. I'm not going to change anyone else's grave or condition, you're not a guide. So as an individual, my grave, Allah wants something, He wants to give me a degree, I'm to remain silent and pass my test with good character. So that Allah said, now you can be a guardian for Ashab al-Kahf because if we guide you to these representative of these seven realities, of these seven realities in which they carry upon earth, you won't bite them, you won't eat them, you won't attack them because you are been trained. When you're trained, no matter how much the testing, they remain silent and they don't propagate hate, they don't attack back. And that's the reality of al fatah rahmah When Allah says, go into my cave, if they're truly coming to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and they understand, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, these awliyaullah whom you love, they are a reflection of your heart coming out. How could I dare say anything? Better for me to remain silent and silent until enough difficulty comes and Prophet intercedes and says, it's enough. This servant is, is, is enough. They understood, he, she understood. And that najat begins to come to the servant where Allah finds a ridan satisfaction that we have tested you like we tested those before you. With your life, with your wealth, with your family, with your possessions, we tested you with everything like those who came before because Allah just said, did you think you were going to get somewhere with no testing where you can come and say, oh Shaykh I don't want to be tested. Oh that's very nice. You could be like those people on the news who they didn't want to have grades to go to Harvard, they wanted to pay for Harvard and they got in jail by doing that. They said, oh my kid is retarded, doesn't have the grace to go, I'm going to give $500,000 to get into the school. What would that have done inside the school? He, can't, he couldn't read and write and $500,000 is going to resolve anything. It's cheating. And then Allah said, well, what? Throw him in jail. Hey, if you're going to cheat in dunya, are you going to cheat Allah said, so I don't want testing, I don't want No, you're going to have testing. If Allah said, well, want to give a degree, he's expecting the characteristics. We pray that Allah open for us more and more understanding. These are holy months. These are months stressed with immense haybah, immense lights, immense blessings. For Allah to open our rahmah means that the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad what is Allah's rahmah? Wa ma arsalnaha rahmatan lil alameen. The Prophet is Allah's rahmah and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to emanate within the entire heart and soul of that being. There's nothing, nothing not worth reaching that. 
There's nothing on this earth that would be dearer or greater than to reach that goal. If we remind ourselves, then every time the test gets difficult, piece, uh, put a piece of wood and bite down. Uh, I've seen those people who <laughs> got their, they, in the old times they had no anesthesia for surgery. And so if somebody wants to do something difficult, they just bite down. So they just remain quiet and bite down, haq, until Allah Zawajal grant her nijad. And Allah Zawajal wait to see that He sees the condition of His servant. And when it's in the right condition, then that opening begin to enter into the heart. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.